Whether I'm right, whether I'm wrong, I've got to be me. I've got to be me. What else can I be? Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It is your boy, Delex Man. Welcome to another Delex Man Q&A Corner. This is going to be a big one. I haven't talked about a lot this week. Honestly, last week tore me up, wore me out. I need a break. I went from doing, let's see, NXT review, SummerSlam live reactions, and SummerSlam review, Raw review, SmackDown review, and after all of that, I was worn out. I needed a break. But your boy the Man got his break, and we're back on track. We are here to do a Q&A. This is number 76, I believe. Q&A 76. We draw closer and closer to episode 100. And as you guys know, my goal for Q&A 100 is to interview a wrestler. Don't know who it is. Don't know when it's going to be. But when episode 100 hits, your boy Deluxe Man will be review uh, reviewing, interviewing a wrestler, whoever it is. We'll find out when it happens. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little different. As you guys know, I'll be answering your questions on both Twitter and Facebook. But we got some things to discuss. We got some new details coming in from the channel. And I want to get this out the way real quick. Your boy, the X Man, is being sponsored. That's right. I now have a sponsorship. And that sponsorship comes from WrestleCrate. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about WrestleCrate, because as of today, you can subscribe to WrestleCrate and get you a free loot box every month. So how it works is like this. Uh, let me go ahead and get the details up. Don't want to screw anything up. So WrestleCrate is a monthly subscription service that delivers a crate full of full, hands-on, hand-picked pro wrestling goodies. For your entertainment. It will send them right to your door. And if you sign up today. You use the promo code. Deluxeman. You will get. Check this out. 20% off. For your first crate. So for your first crate. 20% off. If you use the promo code. Deluxeman. Today. Check it out. The link to it is down below. In the description box. Everything that you need to know about. Is down below. But if you're interested. And you want. To be a part of WrestleCrate. I would, uh, I would invest in a monthly subscription. With that said, this is my first WrestleCrate. So what we're going to do, we're going to open this up. And we're going to see what these guys deliver. Let's see here. Uh, I went ahead and already cut it open. So this is my first time looking into it. I don't even know here. But we're going to find out. Let's see here. We got <laughs> Kenny Omega. We got Kenny Omega. Is this a bobblehead? Or is it just... Figurine. Oh. Never actually had one of these before. This will go right there on that desk there. I like that. That's pretty cool. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, <laughs> Simon Goss photo. Is that the Terminator? That's interesting. Is this is this his new gimmick? I haven't been keeping up with Simon Goss, so I'm not too sure uh, what's going on here. But I like it. It's pretty cool. By the way, I see people uh, talking about KSI and Logan Paul. That fight was rigged. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone asked me about it on my Q&A uh, somewhere in my Facebook or Twitter page. I'm just answering right now. That fight was so rigged. How the hell is KSI going to have 172 to Logan Paul's 171 and then it ended a draw? I don't, I don't watch boxing all that much, so I don't quite understand how that can be a draw. You might have to explain that to me. But this whole thing, regardless of whether it was a draw or not, it's rigged. It's all about getting the money, and now they want to do a rematch? No, 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 no. So y'all can do what y'all want with that. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Okay. Um, what's this? Uh, the Professional Wrestling Fans Magazine issue calling... Spots. Interesting. 
that looks like Kenny Omega. I've never actually seen this before. This is cool. All right. I'm going to check that out later. What else we got here? Uh, DVD. <laughs> the Kingdom Come. That's interesting. I uh, don't even know what this is. Live for wrestling. Is this a event? Yeah, it's a wrestling event. Bobby Orlando versus James Ellsworth. The Ship Crew versus The Breakfast Club. BSK versus MJF. KM versus Teddy Hart. Johnny Clash versus Bear Bronson. And it features uh, Jerry the King Waller. Never seen these events before. Uh, a couple more things in here. We got a t-shirt. And what is this? Slam Town. I like it. You put that on my wrestling shirt next to my go-to an event. Slam Town. And this is a t-shirt of, let's see, it's upside down. Oh, Mayor of Slam Town. It's a John Morrison t-shirt. John, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Nitro, whatever you want to call him. John Hennigan. But there you go. And that essentially is what WrestleQuake does. WrestleQuake. Not WrestleQuake, but WrestleQuake. But that's WrestleQuake for you. They'll send you um, a random crate of random wrestling stuff like this every single month. So subscribe. Check it out. Um, again, if you subscribe today, use the promo code DELEXMAN to get 20% off. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share with as many people as you know. If you want to help expand the brand, if you're a boy, Delex Man, you can do a couple of things. You can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, check me out on Patreon, PayPal, or use Super Chat to donate if you uh, if you feel the need to, if you want to. Um, I should talk about what happened on Tuesday, which I still think is insane. Um, my podcast almost crashed with how many people were donating. You guys are the craziest bunch of wrestling fans I've ever paid witness to, but I love you for it. And I wrote a thank you note on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, thank you all. And those of you who have not seen it, uh, basically, it's just a thank you. Thank you all for what you're, what you're doing now, which is watching me, take, checking me out, uh, spending time with your boy. It means a lot. And I hope that my words draw you to be more passionate about wrestling. Speaking of Super Chats, we got one coming in from Notorious right now. So let me go ahead and get this ready. But um, Let's go ahead and get rid of this wrestle crate real quick. Because... Uh, I think for the most part, we are good when it comes to wrestle crate. Did you see Sammy versus Pentagon Junior Deathmatch? I have not seen that match. Uh, now that you recommended it, I will check it out as soon as this is over with. Um, we're going to talk about All In as well. We're going to do a lot of things here on this podcast. Um, but before I get to any of that, who's here in the live chat? Let's do Roll Call. I'm very curious about Roll Call, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, JCT, Jake Saley, the big mm -hmm. dog. Uh, Ramel Fleming, Ultra Shadow 97, uh, Devil Toad, uh, Zin Zini? Zinani? Zinani? Kizani. Devil Toad Kizani. Close enough. Um, Joseph Winters, uh, Awesome Kid 254, Hellraiser, Big B Wolf, Raven, uh, Chase, John Witt. So I guess WWE, The King, Rowdy Nation Powers, Chris Sims, Harris, uh, Aha Harris, Madeline, uh, Charles, uh, Gatorix, Chase, Ari said Notorious MMA, you saw him donate, Sam P. Boone, McLean Roach, Pikachu Black, Blazing Bolts, NHP 2012, that's a familiar name, welcome back, Elias Adimi, uh, Heavy J, Zion Smith, Okay, PVT Pinecone. I think I said your name right. Uh, Dustin H. Uh, oh, this is an 
Is it Eliza? Eliza Bonella? Bonella? Close enough. Uh, Young Stacks, The Beat Jr., and let's do one more. One more. I know we got someone in here that I probably skipped over because they were coming. Uh, last one's going to be uh, Nick Bryant. Is it Niche Bryant? I think it's Niche Bryant. Close enough. Thank you all for joining me for this broadcast. I hope you enjoyed my Q&A. And we got a super chat coming in from Aaron Sherwood. What's up, Aaron? It's official, Roman Reigns. He is now the number one merch seller in WWE. It only took killing everyone else on the roster and an old man refusing to listen. I mean, when he's in front of your face 24-7, he gets as much TV time and opportunities as he gets. Eventually, he will get that spot. I'm just, I'm just shocked it took him this long to get number one because it's very telling on what they had to do to get him there. Look at the roster. That look at how weak the Raw roster is right now. Think about this for a minute. Brock Lesnar's not here no more. That's one thing. Uh, Rollins at one point was number one, but it is kind of ridiculous how we basically had to hinder everybody else to make Roman seem... I mean, they put Rollins and Ambrose with them. The Shield are back together at this point, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, he better be number one. My, my reaction to that is, if he isn't number one at this point, then he really is a failure. But that's, that's no shock to me. Of course he's going to be number one. Better be. What match are you looking forward to it all in? We'll get to the all in card in just a second. Um, I just kind of feel like I want to get all this other stuff out of the way before we go ahead and jump into all in. But I think for the most part, we should be good. I don't have anything else to discuss. Uh... Yeah, so with that said, let's talk about it. Uh, this upcoming Saturday, September 1st, 2018, will be the all-in event. Pay-per-view, one of the only few wrestling pay-per-views not being held by WWE. And that's big. Uh, an indie pay-per-view, of course, promoted by Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks. This was announced like sometime last year. I forgot the title was announced, but it was it was in the works for a long time now. And they managed to make it work. They sold out Chicago uh, to make this building uh, to make this building the home of what should be a very big uh, very big event for indie wrestling. And you know, it's it's something that I feel like we as wrestling fans should support. Like, if you're tired of just WWE holding a monopoly over the business in general, or just a monopoly of the business, period, um, I would think that I would think the best way to show that is to support this show. And I will be, I will be supporting it. I will be buying it. It's only $35 to watch it on pay-per-view. You can watch it on Fight TV if you want. Uh, if you don't have cable, you can watch it Fight TV online. They'll host it there on their site. $35. Um, I'll buy my, uh, I'll buy my show sometime later this week when I get some more money. But it is getting to the point where, and this is how I feel, any show where I get just a sense of an alternative, I'll happily take. Because NXT is doing great. Lucha Underground is doing awesome. New Japan is doing great. If we can get more competition, that just means better for the business. Alright, Chris Matthews donating a dollar to your boy, The Last Man's Brand. Thank you so much. And yes, it is this Saturday. This Saturday is when the event is being held. So if you're going to watch it, 
I would definitely be able to win. So it premieres, says here it premieres, 6 p.m. Eastern. So, be ready. I hope your Saturday is open. It's not going to be a long show. It looks like it's going to be a regular three hours. So, just kind of save time for yourself to check it out. Here's the card as it stands. Uh, as of right now, these people are booked, but they don't have a match. Matt Cross, that's Son of Havoc. You know him from Blue on the Ground. Maxwell Jacob Friedman? Friedman? I have no idea who that is. Maybe I've seen him before, but... And the best friends. That would be Chucky e. T and Trent Barretta. They don't have a match right now, but I'm pretty sure they will be at it. As well as Cliff Gordon. Who also doesn't have a match. He's been trying to get on uh, All In for some time now. But Cody Rhodes keeps telling him you will never have a match. You will never have a match on All In. As long as I have something to do about it. Like I'm pretty sure he'll get on there. I would love for Flip Gordon to have a match with Neville. We'll talk about Neville in just a second. Because I'm pretty sure I've been asking about him. But just to kind of let you know. His contract is up with WWE, so he can freely wrestle anywhere he wants. Anywhere he wants. So there you go. We'll talk more about that in just a second. I would love to see Neville take on Flip Gordon. Put him on the show. See what they do. They got time. That'd be a great surprise. Uh, but here's the card as it stands. We have the Briscoes versus SCU. Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. Which is pretty, that should be a pretty fine match. I mean, again, not the biggest fan of the Briscoes, but they're not really a tag team that offends me. I can watch them have a solid match. It sounds fun. We got a battle royal. Uh, it's Moose, uh, Cole Cabana, Ethan Page, Rocky Romero, Brian Cage, the man they call Cage, Billy Kidman, Jimmy Jacobs, Marco Stunt, Brandon Cutler, and more. Those are just the people announced. I'm pretty sure we'll have a lot more than that in that Battle Royal. I don't know if there are stakes to this Battle Royal. Like, if they win, do they get a shot at a title or something like that? Not too sure about that. We got a uh, Fatal 4 way women's match. Uh, Madison Rain versus Chelsea Green versus Britt Baker versus Tessa Blanchard. My girl, Tessa. Love me some Tessa Blanchard, bro. She's got it all. I hope she wins this match. We got Stephen Amell, who played Green Arrow, or Arrow, uh, versus Christopher Daniels. Interesting. That should be quite a match to watch. But then we get to the big ones. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Lucha Underground this past week was, wow, that was Lucha Underground. I was waiting for them to get back to what they had, and I knew that it was going to take them some time to rebuild themselves because they lost a lot of people. But now that they've established, that's just coming here like crazy. Now that they established themselves, they can finally start to show the stuff that made us love Lucha Underground. Thank you, Charles, for the $1 Super Chat. I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I thought Lucha was great. And what I'll do next week, I'll do two reviews. I'll do a review of last week, and then I'll do a review of the upcoming week, just to catch up. So that one's probably going to be a long broadcast itself. I'm pretty sure you guys don't.
is scrag. Scrag is a verb, which means to handle roughly, to manhandle. Scrag is also a noun, and it is a person's neck. Let me use the word scrag in a sentence to give you core text. Yes. Whenever I rage you, delete my opponent. I grab them by their scrag. I swing my other arm underneath, hook my fist, and scrag their face into the mat. And that, my friends, is a ferocious twist of fate. It's over! There are three E's in delete. They stand for entertain, enlighten, and educate. You have just experienced all three. <laughs> At NYCM Insurance, we provide the coverage and protection you need, from neighborhood drives to backcountry adventures. Trust Auto Insurance made for New York. Find your local NYCM agent today and get your free quote. Super chat. I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I thought Lucci was great. And what I'll do next week, I'll do two reviews. I'll do a review of last week and then I'll do a review of the upcoming week just to catch up. So that one's probably going to be a long broadcast itself. I'm pretty sure you guys don't care about long podcasts. Um, okay, it says here that Jay Lethal will fight the winner of the Battle Royal for the ROA Championship. Oh, okay. So, this battle royal is a number one contendership battle royal. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's really cool. Is Marley Skrull in it? Or does he already have a match? Oh, crap. He's fighting Kazusuko Okada. Never mind. Uh, who wins? Who do y'all have win this battle royal? But the winner of that battle royal will take on Jay Lethal for the ROS Championship. Sounds good to me. Uh, let's see, what else we got? As I said, we got Kazuska Okada versus Marty Skrull. Apparently, Kazuska has gone a little nutty, and he's going to bring that gimmick to fight the villain. That's going to be a nice match. And check this out. We got the Golden Elite. That's the Young Bucks and Kota Ibushi versus Rey Mysterio, Phoenix, and Bandito. Bandito. No idea who he is, but I'm pretty sure he's a luchador. Yo, let's get it. That sounds like that might be match of the night for me. Or, this could be match of the night for me. We got Sierra Miedo! Pentagon Jr. taking on Kenny Omega. Yo! Yo! That match is gonna be fire! 
I'm excited about that match. That's going to be a really cool match. And then we got, who's this? Joey Janela versus Adam Hangman Page. No idea who that is. I know who Adam Page is, but Joey Janela, Joey Janela doesn't really ring a bell. Should I know who that is? I probably do. But the main event, the match that's going to be, uh, I guess, the focal point of the show, is the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Nick Aldis, that is, um, who was he in TNA? I forgot who he was in TNA. No, I'm looking it up. Because I, I, I know he's somebody, it's, it's not Gunner, because Gunner is, uh, he's in, he's in NXT. Let's see, Nick Aldis was, who in TNA again? Uh, damn it, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure live chat's telling me. Who was he in TNA? Magnus, thank you so much. He was Magnus. Uh, yeah, they, they get him dirty. I remember when we were saying he should be world champion, and then they turned him heel when he became a world champion. That's pretty bad. But yeah, Magnus, the formerly known as Magnus, Nick Aldis, taking on Cody for Cody's daddy's belt, the NWA World Championship in the main event. And I like what they're doing, what Billy Corgan is trying to do with the NWA Championship. It's a championship you must defend around the world. So, it's a championship that you defend in, in multiple promotions, which I love. I love that. I love that concept. So, wherever you go, wherever any promotion you go to, you defend the belt. So, literally, anybody can win that belt at any point in time. And that's smart. The thing is, if you're going to have a championship like that, it needs to be on someone noteworthy. I like Nick. Yeah. Not necessarily going to buy a t-shirt from Nick. Cody, he's probably the most noteworthy guy you could have that belt on. I mean, not to mention his work in WWE, but think about what he's done at the indie, in the indie scene. Think about what he was able to accomplish with this show alone. And because of what he's done with this show, it gave ROH the leverage to hold their own show next year in Madison Square Garden. Cody is changing the game. He's changing the game in so many ways. We need to give him this belt. I do think the right move would be to give Cody the belt. This is the time to do it. So, I will be there to watch the show and then put up a review right afterwards. I will come up here live right after the show on Saturday to review All In. And I hope to see you all there. So, once again, if you want to watch the show... You can watch it on Fight TV or pay per view if you have cable. It's only thirty five dollars. So just a just a show of well, show of hands, sorry, but just to see who's interested. Let me know in the live chat if you'll be watching the show. Let me know who's going to be watching the show this Saturday and what match are you looking forward to the most. Let's see, Mickey James' husband basically is Magnus or Nick. Interesting. Uh, AMR for life yeah. says Cody is this close of being one of the greats. He is really, he is really becoming someone that could be considered one of the greatest of all time. Now let's see, Hellraiser is watching it. Jake Selig is watching it. Uh, JSA Productions, Ultra Shadow, AJ Envoy, uh, Chris Sims. Uh, let's see here. Benny Brocking, Brockington. Notorious. Raven. Anthony Ace. Uh, if he's not working on Saturday, of course. Big B Wolf. <laughs> Elias. His own way. Immortal God. Okay. So we got a couple people watching. Let's see how it turns out. Should be nice. It should be quite the show to check out. So definitely um, a show that I will be watching this Saturday. With that said, enough of the small talk. Let's get to a Q&A. Facebook. So we're going to go to Facebook. And then we're going to go to Twitter. 
on Twitter right now as I'm answering my Facebook questions. You can send me questions with the hashtag AxeDelexman. And of course, you can donate as well. I'll read those questions uh, afterwards. But here we go. First question comes from Demetrius Pettigrew, who is from Milwaukee. Here's what he says. I really liked La Resistance as a tag team. One of my favorites. Do you think a tag team like that would work in WWE today? Depends on how you book it. Um, the whole I hate America concept, I don't think it's going to work anymore because not a lot of people are fond of America, the country as it is. So you might actually have people agree with La Resistance. You don't want to go that route. What you want to do is if you're going to have a French tag team like that, and that's all good and well. doesn't matter what nationality is from. But just make them a national tag team. Make them proud of their country. We're here representing France. We are here to represent the France. And, you know, and that's it. Just keep it simple. You can still make that work. If you're going to go the anti-American gimmick, anti-American route, it's not going to work. Don't. That, that gimmick is so tired, so old, and so done, overdone. I'm I, I'm going to puke the next time I hear, the next time I see someone do another anti-American gimmick. Enough. No more anti-American stuff. Oh yeah, it can still work. You just have to change the way you look it. I see some super chats coming in. Let me go ahead and get this ready. Next question from Denny Palmer. Hollywood, Florida. Is Reigns destined to be Cena 2.0? No change in character, no heel turn, despite crowd reaction, and continue to leave it fresh. Super chat. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your your humble patronage. I will make use of it as always. But Danny Palmer is Cena is Reigns destined to be Cena 2.0. Uh, he's not destined to be Cena 2.0. He is Cena 2.0. He is, and it doesn't look like he's going to be uh, doing anything else anytime soon. And I did speculate on Monday that. The Shield and Roman may have had a heel turn. Once again, that was speculation. And that was coming from people talking about it. People like Mike Johnson, who has inside information on this. He said that it could possibly be a heel turn. And that's the only reason why I talked about it. Do I think it is? No. This this whole run with the Shield is another ploy to get fans to not boo Roman. And what they need to understand is that this can't last. The shield will get old. I guarantee you, the shield will get old by Survivor Series. to have an actual chat in the last super chat, so here is another one. We need Neville versus Flip Gordon at all in, in my opinion. I completely agree. Thank you once again for the super chat, Devlin. Uh, it's really nice of you to do that. But yeah, that'd be a great match. Neville or Pac versus Flip Gordon. <laughs> all day, every day. Uh, but yeah, this whole shield... Uh, reunion is another ploy to stop fans from turning on Roman Reigns. Because think about it, the guy became a world champion. He is their guy now. He is the universal champion. So they need to do something. We gotta get the fans to like him somehow. Well, at least the shield is a temporary solution, but I'm telling you, it's not gonna last. Honestly, it should be done by Hell in the Cell. I hear rumors that we're gonna do Braun Strowman and the Wyatt family. Yeah. Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, and I guess Luke Harper. Don't know how that will work. He's on SmackDown, but we'll probably just throw him on Raw because he has something to do. But yeah, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, and Luke Harper versus The Shield at Hell in a Cell, which 
isn't a bad match. I love their match in 2014. I'll love this match as well. It sounds like it will be a crazy match. And if we get the Dean Ambrose you know, Hill turn that I've been waiting we for, about, uh, more awesome. young so the thing. idea of the Shield versus the Wyatt family isn't a bad idea. It's just this whole concept of we're going to use this to protect Roman from being booed. You're not going to protect him. You might protect him for the time being, but the Shield has to end. And the Ambrose turns heel, he's going to go back to being booed. Peterman and Sachs for Josh And Allen. that's what yeah. it is. This but whole... Look, this the whole plan to talk. get fans to like Roman and making him the top merchandise seller, okay. Like, it's... it's thought it would be a problem coming into the season. It's only going to keep um, him the first game from being booed for so long. Game two against the Browns. Front of crowd the crowd like, like, um, and, and of course, today was, Brooklyn, you know, a coup de grace. Chicago, um, you know, uh, the, Philadelphia. The smart crowds, wherever you want to name them. You go overseas. There are uh, different yeah, I mean, uh, combinations that people we'll tried today. Not um, to you know, that. when you saw the, if you notice, and you can keep this going too long. Fans will just turn on Rollins and Ambrose, which you don't want. Not Rollins, not Rollins. But yeah, um, definitely. By the way, Ryan Roy plays in center. He plays in guard. Um, Russell uh, Bordine is in and out as the first Pittsburgh, team uh, guard. Who is one WWE wrestler? Our first team you center. Met yet uh, that you want to in and out. The guy said afterwards, Sean McDermott said that was the plan. They went into the game expecting to do different things, right. and it came to offensive line. So that was okay, you know, not a result of I I playing Rock. Rock. That was what they're of trying course. to do. Going I want to meet The Rock. I want to meet Hogan. Uh, but like actual WWE performer right now, Daniel Bryan. Clearly, uh, Absolutely. You know, Deion Dawkins had been That's in the game. One. This I would have been a bit of a different story. If I ever do a uh, VIP Dawkins is, you know, uh, backstage tour for WWE when it comes to Houston, I got to meet Bryan. Got to, got to meet Ryan. Right. Easily the Bills, uh, easily the best Jason starting Blue. offensive lineman the Bills have. Jackson Blue. What? Jackson Blue. Or, sorry, for that again. Chase Gordon from Jackson Beal, Florida. Who do you think has the best hot tag in wrestling? The best hot tag in wrestling used to be American Alpha. So let me think about it now. I would always look up Hogan's hot tags. Uh, Hogan's hot tags were amazing back in the day. He would get the hot tag. Oh, brother! Brother! He would hook up. That's still he was so good. Like the finger, um, finger. So even with um, Doc, he's in this game. But nowadays... Run? Because they always go crazy when I don't think you would have saw know, much different results. I mean, this offensive line has problems. Sure. Now, people in the live chat are saying Young Bucks. Comes up and down. We knew that coming in. And I think, you know, Maybe. I think Sean McDermott's going to look at this offensive line okay. and think, I guess, hey, Peter Braun, Young Bucks. And the best so uh, I'll go quarterback for to go with week one for a few different reasons. Uh, Mario, how would you have booked Becky's heel turn? Okay, so. I've been getting a lot of crap from people telling me that, oh, what? You, you don't want Josh Allen, you know, playing all over the field and ball more than 16 pieces. You don't need to turn her heel to make her but character two, interesting. I know that Nate idea Peterman, that because the way he played, their character is boring as a babyface, they have to turn heel to be interesting. No, you don't have to turn them heel to make them interesting. You can make them an interesting character as a babyface. It's the idea of Becky it's being one a boring babyface, nice. I can understand because they haven't been doing anything with her. But now no, that they get her on TV and bought which for this awesome angle, line, potentially be an awesome exactly angle with what you want, Charlotte, um, to kind of make the offense her function. Function. You know, Peterman can at least Top not move the team up down the court. Some period. semblance of the offense going. You can make her hit at least on the to pass. And this possibly idea allow Sean McCoy to do some more work. Yeah, there's other guys that play today. And, you know, Jim. we all know LaShawn McCoy in this By game best makes a big, big difference. And Charlotte, so, could, it's the preseason villain you know, that I would like Josh Allen played great and tell Becky, look, um, it was an opportunity for me, and I took it because no, I could. Touchdowns, 200 yards. I'm sure I still player. would tell you it's the preseason. You don't like it, it too bad. The games it don't bad. matter. The game it plans could. aren't as sophisticated Charlotte or as involved or as researched as they were in the regular She knows she's privileged. She knows she's getting by by nepotism. And that naturally will get you eaten. Season starts. Someone like this one game does not define the bill. Months. But what it does do is confirm what well, we knew all along that the offensive line would be an issue. All of a and they can't fix it. By Charlotte, around. who has gotten multiple opportunities and just got one because 
Paige was pissed off at Carmella but, for attacking Becky. But there Becky. are things that the Bills need to work on when it comes you to the line, mean, and if they don't get them fixed, you know, there's the nothing that says Nate Peterman or A.J. McCarron sure or whoever it is on the center against the Ravens. Here. Let me look at this screen real quick. They did. So we'll talk about uh, Road Dog later on. But um, the fact that we're even thinking about turning that heel is ridiculous. If you ask me... Won't also be taking four or five times. How should she turn heel? Let me tell you how she should turn heel. If you want to turn Becky heel, you should have had her win at SummerSlam. You should have had her win at SummerSlam. On the plus side today, complete her baby face right right completely in that storytelling. She gets the championship. She has a match against Charlotte, and she cheats to keep the belt. Um, you know, he went against backup. And then you plan to see the, you the, know, the Bengals, uh, second team defense but did you, not or, uh, play most of the second half. You can't you know, just I was watching do the it. Bengals. You know, it's one of those things where you come out of the locker room if you're going to turn you know, Drake and Patrick, AJ Green, they have a bunch of oranges, sense. they have and the socks down, baseball hats on. I don't think this story we have now makes any kind of sense. They try to play the whole idea that Benjamin gets moving. Not respected that fans don't really like Becky, that we're never behind her, which is a complete lie. It's a complete fabrication. When you saw the year, you know, fans were always behind Becky. That's his So it just comes across phony to have Becky say, You guys were never behind me. You didn't riot when Charlotte won the championship. You really look at where we are at this point. We moved the hell out of her when you hugged her, and we cheered you when you beat her up. So don't make up stories like that. Kind of if one three, person turns heel, it has to come from a logical story. Back in August, or back in the you know, championship, that and she Josh so Allen has a whole lot of upside, but it's going to be a big project. Um, the whole concept, concept it is an old, old, old school concept, concept of a um, championship corrupting um, the chapter. Other today, with Marcus Murphy look good. And, you know, as bad as the rest of the offense was, the fact that Murphy still starred, she got the championship, and she got corrupted by it, because she's so desperate to be an adequate runner. I think was a huge plus for him. Jason okay. Drew made a couple plays. The touchdown like was that. very, very nice. And it makes He's another guy that I think is. You know, it, he and Murphy are probably uh, locked for over a year. Uh, they won't start. And but they're going to get time. They're going to get time. You know, I know we go that long. Running back, Bill Shab, with Sean McCoy, they have a Ivory. Ivory's been solid. And you finally get it back. Marcus Murphy touched the ball. He scared the game. He's never going to get the same opportunity as other people. But I like he's shown that he's a guy. Completely understandable heel turn. If that was the way they were going to that, fight, and, you know, command I wouldn't be mad. I'd be um, like, you know what? Going to the Chicago, uh, Sean McDermott said that she probably would be a great heel. Because we set things up that he doesn't yet way know that who the quarterback will be. He would say Brandon Bean is working on it. So there's a, a pretty good chance that there will did, be a quarterback. It doesn't feel right. But that's what I would do. That's what I would have done. So... <clears throat> That will play in that that's game that's not on the roster question. right now. Thank not a asking. surprise. You know, McCarron, we'll here. according to Sean McDermott, will practice uh, some this week. But it doesn't sound like he's going to be ready to go to go. handle any kind of work. Right. So, so, this is you know, we still have one more preseason game to go. Um, I guess it's possible you Josh Allen could play. If I'm Sean if McDermott, put in charge of WWE tomorrow, who are you really saying? And they better be my starting quarterback. I'm going to play Josh Allen in the WWE. Bears game. I really can't Jim hurt. Jimmy Hall is gone. Um, you know, it's going to be a game without many gone. stars on either side. Uh, I know the Bills' offensive line is I troublesome, do. and you worry about his health. But the guy's got to play. The guy's got to learn. So I would play Josh Allen some against the Bears. I don't know if Sean McDermott would be the same. Bring back. Um, you know, that again is a game hmm. to decide who makes the team, who gets jobs, who we'll in the last spot on the roster. So you're not going to see Sean McDermott. You're not going to see Kyle Williams. You're not going to see a lot of the other major stars the Bills. But if I'm there's Sean McDermott, I think that I would right play now. I uh, Josh Allen. Like so. that, because we have enough talent uh, as it Josh is. Allen. Yeah, I think Crum and uh, Mark Murphy make this team. I, I think, think they're pretty much lost. Too much talent. They don't know what to do with them. They got uh, so much talent. They have no idea how to use them. Regular season. I mean, you're not a Bills fan, but you know this is this is a game where you got to say to yourself, it's only preseason. It's only preseason. I would bring anybody back. Nothing. I was going to answer like increase. that. I know I people were saying Damian week, Sandow you know, would be great. When we talked about the positive, I guess that would be my answer, Damian Sandow. Good. But it's preseason. People you are know, saying Josh Allen against backup. She we saw great. today against starters. Uh, you know, he's not the same kind of quarterback. Of course, the well, offensive line is a big factor. But yeah. Josh Allen still has uh, a long way to go. Damian so, Sandow so, would um, We're going to head out of here. I'm starting to drive back to Rochester. Next week, we'll see me from Chicago. Like game will be on Thursday night. Kickoff at eight o'clock. Uh, Buffalo kickoff you know live I mean? at seven thirty. Beforehand, we will do a post game yeah, show following. Because we got it. And then finally, 
we can start talking about some regular season yeah, football. Aaron, so, well, thanks for checking call, in with me tonight. Ta- we'll see you call, again call, uh, call, probably maybe call, one day Tuesday. Yes. We'll talk some more bills. But what happened sure. to Bray Wyatt after Matt Hardy retires? Um, obscurity. Hopefully not. They, they should keep him as a baby face. Give him a run. Matter of fact, I say give him a run after that championship. Keep a baby face, but you just don't have to Roman. See, a baby face Bray Wyatt taking on Roman Reigns would be great. I would love to see that match. Seriously. Alright. But yeah, he'll probably fall into obscurity. Christopher Simmons. Chris Simmons. Uh, the Ruthless Aggression Era is my favorite era of all time. Great era. What are some of the best memories you have from watching the Ruthless Aggression Era? Boy! Eddie Guerrero. Chris Benoit, WrestleMania 20. Eddie Guerrero winning the championship, period. Kane vs. Shane McMahon, 2003. That entire feud is one of my favorites. Randy Orton vs. Mick Foley, Backlash 2004. A classic among classics. Edge's championship reign, the Rated R. Superstar! SmackDown in general. SmackDown during the Rufus Aggression era was basically the VA show. They had some amazing things. Maybe not so much 2004, but 2002, 2003, 2005, 6, they were on fire. The feud between Eddie and Rey Mysterio in 2005, Eminem, remember Eminem? That's Joey Mercury, Johnny Nitro, and Melina. Remember Melina? Mm hmm. Tori Wilson, Stacey Keebler. Oh, boy. Batista versus Triple H. I like that pick. Evolution. Evolution. So many, so many things John Cena is best. My goodness. Just a lot of the stuff that you can just come on by.
That would have been awesome. That would have been an awesome freaking storyline. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Moving on. Lorenzo. Do you think Velveteen Dream will be booked, used properly when he gets to the main roster? No. <laughs> but I have faith that Velveteen Dream will make it work regardless. I don't trust anybody who will be booked right when they get to the main roster, especially coming from NXT, because a lot of the people that came from NXT, they didn't have it all that well. They didn't have it. I mean, Kevin Owens had some success, but look at him now. Sammy Zayn, look at him now. I don't see them doing very well. That's just me. But I do think he could make it work because he's really good at his job. Charles Mitchell from Virginia. Who do you think will beat Ronda Rousey for the Women's Championship? Probably Charlotte. Probably Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 35. Which WrestleMania was worse? WrestleMania 9 or WrestleMania 27? Whoa. I thought WrestleMania 9 was a crappy show, but WrestleMania 7 was absolute garbage. Oh my god, so bad. I don't even remember. Let, let me see. Let me see what I rated WrestleMania 27. I think I gave WrestleMania 27 a lower grade than, um, than I did 20, uh, WrestleMania 9. Although 29 was a bad show as well. Let me see. So WrestleMania 27 got a D. Like a straight up D. Like like the lowest grade. D. And then WrestleMania 9 got... Let me see. What did I get WrestleMania 9? Was it a D plus? That's WrestleMania 10. Okay, WrestleMania 9 got a D plus. So I guess for my grading system, WrestleMania 27 was the worst one. They're both horrible shows, so does it really matter? I guess WrestleMania 27 wins still because it got the lowest grade. So there you go. WrestleMania 27. Jesus. Both shows sucked. Here we go. Johnny from Virginia. A lot of people from Virginia. Imagine Roman Reigns versus Tommaso Ciampa and the crowd reaction. <laughs> Honestly, I, I know what you're trying to say. I see the crowd getting behind Tommaso Ciampa to beat Roman Reigns. I would not be shocked if Ciampa got cheered to take on Roman. He is that hated. Second question. SmackDown 1000 is coming up in my area. Do you think I should go? Absolutely, Johnny. You better go. That's a big event. 1,000? Get your ticket immediately when it comes out. You better go. You better enjoy yourself. Definitely go. What kind of question is that? Bro, you don't get opportunities like that. You're not going to be around for episode 2,000, are you? Probably, but you want to wait that long? Don't. Don't wait that long. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Episode 1. Thousand. One thousand. Buy your ticket yesterday and go. Definitely go. Dominique from North Carolina. Dominique, excuse me. With the recent nonsensical heel turn of Becky Lynch at SummerSlam. Would you say WWE's main roster lost its touch on how to make a compelling heel? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break because I need to show you guys something. So, recently, Road Dog, mm -hmm, Road Dog Jesse James, went on the Twitter and decided <laughs> to defend the heel turn with Becky Lynch. And I waited for his opportunity to put this up. And since I am blocked and I can't read his tweets because anytime Road Dog gets sensitive about people criticizing him, he feels the need to block instead of actually talking to him. But I can't read his tweets. However, I had some fans copy and paste those tweets to me. So I'm going to show them to you right now. So here's the first one. 
me a uh, real quick. So this is the first tweet, and this is a fan defending her. Uh, let me see here. Is it Vince? Again, it's cut off, so I can't really show too much of it. But let's do um, let's do this. Let's, let's shorten you a little bit because I want you to see my face. All right, so here we go. Her reasoning just doesn't make sense. I mean, she did that interview with Gorilla Position, and what she said on there is what her promo should have been. Basically, y'all need to begin to trust your wrestlers and not micromanage every promo to the last word. And here is what Brian James said to that. It's funny. This revolt is exactly what Becky's character is saying. I didn't get my way now that I'm mad about it. Uh, and make no mistake, I'm talking about her character, not the person. The person did an interview, the character did the promo. So that's the first tweet he put up. Okay, let's get the next one in here. So, uh, let's see here. Can I... I think I can make a new slide real quick. Let me do one real quick. I should have had these ready. I didn't. Well, why I get these up? Shouldn't take that long. Okay, uh... Here's the second one. Let me go ahead and shorten that up. You'll see my face in just a second. I'm just organizing this real quick. Alright, here we go. Here's the, uh, here's the other tweet. So, this, this man tweeted, Becky was an inspirational underdog who had everyone behind her and whose friend undercut the opportunity she earned. Her being frustrated makes sense, but her suddenly turning into a villain while the undercutting friend plays the victim does not. Agreed, right? Here's what Bro Dog said. Well, I see it differently. If you need to be right to be happy, I give up. You're right. How did the friend do anything wrong, though? She was given the same exact opportunity, and she took it. I get it. You and Becky's character wanted Becky to win. Pause. We're gonna we're gonna analyze that tweet real quick because we need to we need to think about what he said. This man said they were given the same opportunity. In what universe would you even consider that to be a dish? By the way, this is how you know he's written the storyline. Anytime someone criticizes a creative decision that Road Dog wrote, he's always defending it. Like Jenna Mahal on Twitter, you know that was his idea. The idea of Pyro not being in WWE no more, that was also his idea. Like, all of this is rolled off, by the way. I did several videos on Becky's turn. Dallasman, THX. No problem, man. But let's analyze this for a minute. So, this, this creative producer is saying that Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch climbed the same mountain, uh, got the same opportunity. I'm sorry, but explain to me how Becky Lynch had to go three months, probably even a little more, but months, a span of months, picking up victories, just winning matches after being irrelevant for almost, I dare say, a year. She hasn't been doing anything. But suddenly she starts winning matches, beating people like Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, you name it. Just getting victories after victory after victory. And fans are starting to get more and more and more behind her. And after getting enough victories, she earns, earns a title shot against Carmella. How is that the same thing as Charlotte losing an opportunity, going away for a month, and then getting a match with Carmella because Paige was pissed off at Carmella? And then Charlotte wins that match to get a match to get added to the match at SummerSlam. How is it the same thing? It's not the same opportunity at all. And to even imply that they that they had the same opportunity lets me know that you really don't know what you're doing. That you are extremely tone deaf. But this is just this isn't this isn't even all of it. But this alone just lets you know. What we're 
dealing with. This is bad. And y'all wonder why I always tweet Fire Road Dog, and it's nothing personal against him. But the guy doesn't know how to tell a story. <laughs> What matches do you think will be at Evolution? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second because I had someone ask me that question on Facebook as well. But this is just this is just mind numbing. And to think that this guy is writing, producing, Raw and SmackDown, that's scary, but we're not done yet. That wasn't even the dumbest thing he said. We're gonna go to the last tweet. The last one that we know of so far. This one just really this this is unbelievable. This tweet that I'm about to show you. Check this out. So, this is from Joshua Roberts. By the way, if this is... If this so happens to be one of my bands, let me know. But Joshua, let me make it a little bit bigger. Say it. But the story we've been told is Becky had to fight and struggle to earn an opportunity at the title. Charlotte was just handed an opportunity and took the moment away from her best friend. Becky is right and justified in everything she says and is no way the bad person. He replies, that's not the story you were told. That's the story you wanted to hear. She had the, the exact she had to do the exact same thing as Charlotte did. Beat Carmella. They both climbed the exact same mountain. I'm just gonna keep that up. They, they, they climbed the exact same. Ooh, what mountain are you talking about? This, this is nowhere near the exact same road, mountain, whatever you want to call it. Becky clearly had to work a lot harder. Now, you can say, you can use this crazy idea that they climbed the exact same mountain, which is flawed. It's not the exact same mountain, but okay, fine. Whatever logic you want to use. Even if this is the exact same mountain, to get that match against Carmella, Becky had to win over a span of three months to even fight Carmella and then get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So she clearly had a, better, a, a harder time climbing up that mountain. Charlotte loses to Carmella. She already was on the top of the mountain. She lost to Carmella. And instead of being kicked off the mountain, she just, I don't know, she grew wings <laughs> and just got another opportunity. There was no climbing for Charlotte. There never has been climbing for Charlotte because she's been given the opportunities because she's Charlotte Flair. So, yeah, she was handed the opportunity. She was handed an opportunity to fight Carmella. But one that she never really earned. She didn't have to earn it because she's Charlotte Flair, right? So, this is the same guy that's writing SmackDown. This is the same guy that is producing the shows. And the fact that he is this tone deaf, that he cannot comprehend why fans are getting behind Becky, lets me know that we are in some serious trouble if this guy continues to produce the shows. You, you can't tell me that this guy knows what he's doing now. He can't tell a story properly, and he's tone deaf. And look, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be the guy to say Road Dog should not be involved in the wrestling business. I don't even think Road Dog is a bad guy. He just sucks at his job. He sucks at his job. Exhibit A, B, and C, the tweets I showed you. This storyline was all about making Becky Lynch that underdog hero. And then you culminated by having her become a villain? By making up some BS story that we were never behind her? Who does that? I'll tell you who. Some incompetent writer. I'm sorry, Road Dog. You, you should not be right, Joe. And I keep saying that. And you keep sticking your own foot in your mouth each, each time you tweet. And I know a lot of people are saying, at least he's talking to us. I guess that's a good thing. But it's probably good that he doesn't speak to the fans anymore because he sucks at explaining himself. It's to his own detriment. Seriously. But yeah, man, Road Dog. He doesn't know what he's doing. And you know this is his idea. The fact that he's going out of his way to defend this lets you know that it was his call to turn her heel. 
So, getting back to the question. Sorry, that was a long response to your question. Um, do I think they've lost touch on how to make a compelling heel? Absolutely. They're told that. Mm-hmm. They don't understand what makes a heel to modern day audiences. They don't understand what makes a heel to modern day audiences. What they're doing are concepts that worked back in the 80s and 90s. It's different here in 2018. It is. So, you can fight against the grain all you want and try to get fans to hey, Becky, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And apparently, well, someone's asking me, is Road Dog still on SmackDown or is he on Raw? Apparently, he's right for both shows now. He's on both shows. Lord help us. Let's move on. Sumter. Is it Sumter? Sumter. I'll just say your last name. Rudolph from Connecticut. If CM Punk came back to WWE, how would you book him uh, to Mania? Well, the reputation that he's coming in with from UFC, that's going to precede him. We got to start him from the bottom. You got to start him from the bottom and work his way back up. He's a broken man. CM Punk comes in as a broken man. He's not the punk we knew. He's beaten. He's defeated. He's battered. I would have him come back and go on a losing streak. Of course, it would be one of those losing streaks where he's not trying. He's not trying anymore. He's just losing. He doesn't have passion for He doesn't have passion for himself. Let alone the rest of the same more. He's baby, he's better. Over time, he starts talking to people like Brian. He starts talking to people like Rollins, people who he worked with on the indie circuit. And they start reasoning with him, and they let him know, Punk, you're the reason why I'm here. AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Punk, you're the reason why I'm here. Punk, you're the reason why I'm here. Punk, you're the reason why I'm here. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Punk, you're the reason why I'm here. And then over time, gradually, he starts to find himself again. And then by WrestleMania, he's back to his old CM Punk ways. Now, eventually, I would have him with the championship to really culminate that. But we got to bring him in down his luck. Because right now, you bring him in like everything's okay, it's not going to work. So you really got to bring him in uh, as a battered, uh, broken man. And then you rebuild him, essentially. That's what I would do. Let's see here. Isaiah Webb, another Becky Lynch question. I may be biased towards Becky Lynch, but, uh, hold on, try this again. I may be biased towards Becky Lynch, being that she's my favorite women's wrestler. The story we've been told for months is that Becky is a talented, hardworking whose fans naturally want to want her to succeed. Uh, agree with, I agree with Bully Ray, who said that her popularity is similar to Daniel Bryan's 2014. Uh, she's been robbed out of the money in the bank, the title, and has been held down by the system for so long that you feel sorry for her. And if Becky Lynch is drawing sympathy from the audience, that makes her a babyface in my book. They really expect fans not to be behind the person that beat everyone fairly to get a title shot, only to have someone else cut in line. With a double turn similar to when Del Rio mercilessly beat Dolph Ziggler and put him out of action work for this week. Not only will it work, I think that's the only route we can go. I think Charlotte needs to be the heel here. Because that just feels natural. Not just to the view, but think about this long term. If the idea is to do Charlotte Flair against Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania 35, wouldn't it make that feel a lot more sweeter if Charlotte was the heel? And you know something? I think Charlotte will eventually turn heel anyways to do that view. So why not plant the seeds here? Why not turn her heel here and get her back into a role? By the WrestleMania time, we can have her win the Royal Rumble, go to Raw, and fight Ronda. But she'll need to get her feet wet as a heel again here on SmackDown. Turn her heel, have her feet with uh, Becky Lynch, have Becky be here for the championship, has Charlotte win the Royal Rumble, go to Raw to fight Ronda Rousey. As a heel. That just seems a lot more, it just seems a lot more logical to me that way. 
That's how I would do it. Will it work at Hell in a Cell? Probably. I do it at Hell in a Cell, that's for sure. Second question. WWE Champion AJ Styles, in the eyes of many, is the best performer and should be the face of WWE over Roman Reigns. Of course. However, he hasn't made a pay-per-view since Fastlane. Now that Reigns is Universal Champion, it seems that he will most likely be main main over AJ Styles. Does this book any value to the WWE Championship? Absolutely. And we already knew that was going to happen the moment they did the brand split. The moment they did the brand split, we said the WWE Championship is going to play second field to the Universal Championship. Because okay. it's on SmackDown. And that sucks. It shouldn't be that way. The most prestigious title the WWE Championship should always go on last. I will say this though. If we are getting the Wyatt Family versus the Shield at Hell in a Cell, more than likely the main event will be AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. As it should be. As it should be. Uh, see, Brian Walmer. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, Brian Walmer. From Newman, California. Do you think Corbin being acting GM, oh goodness, if so, don't we could put Corbin versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship? I hope not. That's horrible. That would be a horrible match to do. Good God. Uh, do you think Ronda versus Stephanie will happen at Evolution? I take that over Ronda versus Nikki Bella. Okay, and he asked me, what matches do you see happening at Evolution? So, Brie Bella versus Maurice is probably going to happen. I think Asuka's going to have a match. We got to do Asuka versus somebody. Um, I mean, <clears throat> we can do Asuka versus Shannon Baszler. <clears throat> I'm trying to think about this. We just going to have a match. I would do Rhea versus Asuka, honestly. That's the match I want to see. I don't know if they'll do that. Uh, Ronda should fight Becky. Well, Becky's gonna fight Charlotte. I know that for sure. Ronda should definitely fight Bailey and Sasha. That should be the main event. That would be an awesome match to do. Won't happen, but that would be a great match to do. Think of this shield versus sanity of Survivor Series. Nah. Sorry. <laughs> nah. Sorry with me. Uh, let's see here. I don't even know what I want to say about that match yet. I don't know. They, they haven't been booking Sandy all that strong, so I can't really say I'd be excited for that match. No offense. Uh, and why, and no offense in asking this, do a majority of rumors and superstars get started by fans, only to be corrected by the superstars themselves or very reliable sources. Are these fans that desperate to get their dream matches to happen or to see these stars in other promotions? Well, there's nothing wrong with speculation. You know, I don't think we should go out of our way to say it's going to happen. But to say, I want to see Kurt Angle versus Daniel Bryan, nothing wrong with that. It could happen. Will it happen? Probably not. But nothing wrong with speculation. I want to see AJ Styles versus Shawn Michaels, which is, a, which is a match people said would happen. Didn't happen. Would be a great match. Um, speculation. That's all it is. AJ Styles versus Undertaker. Not going to happen, but it'd be a great match. Should be happening at that showdown. Instead of doing Triple H and Taker, we should be doing AJ Styles and Taker. Good God. That would be a much better match. I thank you for your questions. Oh, for you. How long do you think Roman will hold that title? WrestleMania 35. Who do I think is taking it from him? Rollins. Should be Rollins. Mr. Johnson. Al Johnson from Brooklyn. Which WWE and NXT wrestlers would be perfect for either the Avengers or the Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, crap. Okay. You're making me think hard on this one. I guess John Cena would be Captain America. Johnny Gagano would be Iron Man. Becky would be... Do I want her 
to be Scarlet Witch or do I want her to be Black Widow? Becky's gonna be Black Widow. Um, Scarlet Witch will be Mickey James. Yeah, Mickey James. Um, some of y'all say Alexa Bliss, nah, Mickey, Mickey. Uh, Black Panther. Uh, Velveteen Dream? I'm thinking about that one. I'm going with it. I like Velveteen Dream as Black Panther. Spider-Man? Mm -hmm. I'll take on Black Okay, so this one got, apparently, uh, muted. Oh, oh yeah, Mr. Crash, $2. Sasha Banks is pissed that Alexa is facing Trish. I'm pissed too. That should have been Sasha's match. But guess what? Sasha's with Bailey now, so she can't end up fighting her. They better get that triple threat against Ronda. Uh, Kobe Kingston probably would be Black Man. I actually think Black Man should be a Kobe Kingston. Never mind. Uh, Valentine Dream can play um, War Machine. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think I covered for them. I mean, Hawkeye could be anybody. Name somebody. I don't know. Uh, Thor. Ooh, who's gonna be Thor? Maybe Roman. Nah, it's gonna piss people off. I don't know. I don't know who I'd make Thor. Triple H will be Thor. There you go. And Hulk will be Brock Lesnar. And we're good. That's out. That's all I got. Uh, Spider-Man could probably be played. I was going to have him be played by Will Ospreay. But you said next team WWE wrestler, so I can't say him. Oh, crap. Okay. Kalisto. There you go. Now, speaking of Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy, where does Infinity War rank in your list? Infinity War is my favorite so far. Where would John Cena be today if Brock Lesnar never left WWE? That's a good question. Probably still be... Probably still be trying to get that doctor at Thugonomics to get over doing Hollywood, who knows. Have I seen Blade Trinity in 2004? I have. Oh, what did you think of Triple H's first acting role? He did pretty alright. He did pretty alright. And Melissa wants me to give her advice about her mom. My mom has throat cancer. Oh, God. Let me change this real quick. Sorry. Got to change the screen. My mom has throat cancer. I'm really scared. This is not the first time she got cancer. She got a brain tumor back in 2000. 2010. I'm really depressed right now. I have been taking medication for depression and anxiety for a long time. What should I do? Melissa, you just dropped a bomb on me. Um... Well, just be there for her. Be there for her. And I'm a Christian, so I do I do believe in the power of prayer, but I also do believe action without prayer is worthless. What you need to do is while she's going through her trial, wherever she's going through. Make sure you're there. Make sure you're there for her. Make sure you're you're constantly by her side. You're showing her love. You're showing her support. And if she gets in the a bad spot, just be there. Be there. Cause it's as much as she's struggling, the one thing you don't want her to be is alone. And you, you yourself, anxiety and depression. I know all about that. Trust me. Um. You gotta be careful that you don't get too down in the dumps. You gotta start doing things for you. You know, eventually, you help her out, be there, but every once in a while, take a second to worry about yourself. You know, just take a break. You know, um, check yourself out. What do you like to do, Melissa? What do you like to do? Like, where do you like to go? Like, I don't know much about you. You're here for live chat a lot. You like listening to me on YouTube, and I thank you for that. 
But it's, it's always good to get yourself out there. Get you, get you a boyfriend. Go out there and see if you can get you a boy or a girl. Get you a significant other. Go out there and flirt. You know? But at this point in time, I'm not a doctor. So I don't know what I can do to help you in terms of what what could cure what alien what what hurts her, what's what's getting her there. But I'll tell you what, um live chat, Melissa's probably watching this. Send her your uh best wishes. And I'll just take the second to say, Melissa, prayers are going your way. Um, we're a family here. Here on YouTube, uh, we support each other. And Melissa, the live chat and I, we're, we're sending you our best wishes. I hope things work out for you. We hope your mom comes through. For um, for you, she fights through this and she comes out kicking at it too, brother. Like Hulk Mania did. Is she a wrestling fan, by the way? Probably not. But yeah, um, that's what you gotta do. And that's all you can do. Pray. And be there. And just watch God work. And uh, look at all this love. Look at all this love in the live chat. See, we got you, Melissa. We got you. <laughs> Giovanni, you would be a good therapist. Calm down. I need a therapist. I already have one, but I'm going to ease therapy. I, I had to go on from this, Melissa. So, hope things work out. Moving on to David from Sacramento, California. Uh, out of the 2018 Mae Young Classic roster, who are your top five draft picks for WWE to sign? Huh. So, E.O. Shirai is already signed. Let me see. May Young Classic roster. Oops. Let me see what they got. Classic 2018 roster. If you put that in. Let's see here. Um, we have. Uh, who the hell is. Caitlin should definitely come back. Caitlin number one. Sure. Lorel Xavier donated. Yeah. Melissa takes no L's. She sure doesn't. She a fighter. You gotta fight. Let's see here. Uh, Deanna Par Parazzo should definitely be signed. Um. They already signed Tony Storm, so we're good with her. Um, Mercedes is signed. Get her in there. Me, okay, so here we go. Uh, we got Io Shirai already. So let's do Mia Yim. Let's do Mercedes for sure. Let's get Mercedes back in here. Let's do Caitlyn. Get her back. Um, I don't see Viper or Piper in here. I'm just still kind of looking over it. Uh, Tony Storm, absolutely. And I guess Miko Satomura. There you go. That's five. Here's your five right there. Uh, but Mia Yam, bruh. Mia Yam can get it all day, every day. You know, y'all know what I'm saying. You, you, you don't. Okay. Sorry. Do you think as great of a feud as it's been, if Gargano Ciampa don't have a long break, it could result in heat towards Gargano becoming stale going forward when he's called up? Um, there are ways to get around that. Here's what I think should happen. I do think we should do one more match with them. If you want to give them a break, that's fine with me. I do think Tommaso Ciampa should go on a, a little bit of a longer ride. And hold that belt for a little bit longer. And we should send Gargano on a losing streak. We need to take, we need to tear him down and build him back up again. Um, I, I, I would have him have a normal championship match and lose, and then kind of, you know, refine himself. Because I like the story we have right now. I like where we are. Tommaso Ciampa months ago was on stilts, was on crutches, 
uh, Stills, who was on crutches, and now Gargano is on crutches. So they've swapped positions now. And I like that. Uh, I don't see it against jail. That's that's just me. Uh, Jake from Boston asks, do you think Devil will be all in? I hope so. I hope he's all in. We'd love to see him at the show. Rumor is Braun Strowman would team up with Bray Wyatt, Luke Carpenter, form the, the Wyatt family, and face the Shield. We already talked about that. Do you think it will be good? Yes, I would love to see the match, and I know it would eventually lead to an Ambrose heel turn. So yes, I would like that. After Johnny versus Tommaso, who would you have Johnny uh, lose the title to? Would it be Adam Cole or someone else? Adam Cole's the person who lose the title to, honestly. But, probably Keith Lee, because that's my boy. And Lawrence from South Carolina. If the Chris Benoit, if the Chris Benoit situation never happened, who do you think WWE would be? How do you think WWE would be these days? Would it be different or the same old stuff? Um, that's a good question. I would like to say they still be TV 14, but I think they were going to change anyways. Chris Benoit was going to leave. Let's not get it twisted. Benoit was going to TNA. Once his contract was up, he was going to TNA. And I think Eddie would have gone too. So, maybe Eddie still would go down the route that they were always going to go down. That's just how I see it. Alright, um, let's see here. Let's go to Twitter. Uh... Now we're going to Twitter to answer the hashtag Ask the Let's Man. So let's see here. And apparently we had another shooting in Jacksonville today. Good God, these shootings are ridiculous, man. I'm getting tired of these shootings. Hey, Alex, did you answer my question? From B More, MD. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, let me see. Let me go back and check if I missed you or not. Hopefully, I didn't miss you, Michael. Well, let me see. Super chat's coming in. Finn and Braun team to face Shield. So we're replacing Luke Harper with Finn Balor. That would be interesting. I actually like that. I actually do like that. So I, I think, Michael, you, you sent me questions on Twitter. And if you did, I'm going to answer those questions right now. So here we go. Uh, Pro Wrestling Super Saiyan. Who would win this field for a way? Brock Lesnar, Strowman, no more Tears, or Matanza. That would be insane. I'm going with Matanza. Sam P. Boom. I tweeted to Brian James about about watching your video, and I hope he tweets me back after he watched the video. Oh, thanks, man. So, I talked about Rodog in the video, so hopefully he does watch it. Very curious to see what he says. Uh, did you hear about Sasha being pissed that Elizabeth is facing Trish Stratus? Yeah, because that match sounds bad. Sasha versus Trish should have been the match. Mm -hmm. Honestly. But Mojo Shadow, will you be picking up Tales of Esperia? Definite. Uh, definitive edition this winter. I didn't know that was coming out. I can check that out, man. Uh, do you have any memories of watching classic Nickelodeon game shows? Double Dare, uh, Nick Arcade, Nick Guts, figure it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, my favorite one was, uh, oh, crap. It's, it's, it's the Temple Show. Oh, let me, let me look it up. Nickelodeon Game Show. Temple. Legends of the Hidden Temple. There it is. Love that show. Love that show. Really good stuff overall. Uh, how 
do you think things would have gone for Roman in 2014 had he not suffered the injury? It would have gone the exact same way. There was no stopping it. Let's see here. If Eric uh, Hostel would fight anyone in WWE, who would you think she'll fight? Who the fuck is Eric Hostel? She's an American YouTuber. Who the fuck is Erica Costal? I have no idea who this is. Should I know who she is? Apparently she's a YouTuber. Um, don't know how to answer that question. Don't know who that is. Apparently, I apologize. Uh, let's see. Mark, Rob, Mark. Thoughts on WWE's attempt to monopolize the British scene. With NK, with UK, NXT UK. I'm alright with this right now. I don't know why I'm answering your question. Singing with pictures like this right here. I'm moving on to Sammy Peoples. Question about Mitch Underground. I did watch it on Wednesday, by the way. Um, Madeline. Would you like to see Randy Orton get one last title run as a heel? Just give it a shot. Uh, Melissa, by the way, Melissa is in the chat, guys. She says thank you. We love you, Melissa. Let's see here. Uh, if NXT went live TV from John Smith, uh, would that make it better or worse? So do I think... Uh, do I think John Smith uh, has a point with NXT suffering when it goes live? Not really. I think it actually will help it if it goes live. Because guess what that means? No more spoilers. And you catch it when it happens. So I think it'll go, it'll go, it'll go be better. Let's see here. Uh, Jake. If Marty Skrull ever came back to WWE, ever came to WWE, <laughs> tries again. If Marty Skrull ever came to WWE, how would you feel about a rivalry with him and Finn? Bet all day, every day. I love that. It'd be great. Who are your top three wrestlers from each big promotion? WWE, AJ Styles from Raw, AJ Styles, Rollins, and. I guess Ambrose, if he turns heel. Well, I said Raw. So Raw, Rollins, Ambrose, and... McIntyre? Sure. SmackDown, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Daniel Bryan. NXT... Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, and Velveteen Dream. Uh, Pusha Underground, Pentagon Jr., Pentagon Dark, uh, Mil Moinetes, and Phoenix. Uh, PWG. Well, that's not really a promotion. Uh, see, I actually, NXT is so many. That, that one's hard. See, I said Velveteen Dream, Gargano, and Tommaso Ciampa. I could have said Ricochet, Adam Cole. So many. Um, I think that's all of them. And Impact, Sammy Callahan, Pentagon Jr. again, and Johnny Mundo. Okay, there you go. Uh, okay. I think that's about it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, it's not. Bradley Xavier. Bradley from Melbourne, Australia. With almost four years since the New Day made their debut, do you think they should have gone with the Nation of Domination direction? Nope, this is fine. I'm happy they went with this. This was new, it was original, it was great. Um, now that Rey Mysterio is more than likely to come at WWE, how would you book him? 205 Live. No, no disrespect either, I think he would be great wrestling against Cruiserweights. Do not have a wrestle against anybody but Cruiserweights. Uh, Dave. Could you see this show reunion as the catalyst for Ambrose Hill's turn? That's exactly why I see it's happening. At Hell in Cell or whenever they do it, it'd be a great Hill turn. Uh, do I like Wilding Out? I do like Wilding Out. 
And let's see here. Uh oh, no. uh oh, he's back. It's the legend. Turn. 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 The legend is back. Thank you for the super chat, ET. Seven dollars. You are very, very uh, generous with your donations. Um, so, Michael Law, I did not see your question. Go ahead and send it to me here. I'm gonna take a five. I'm gonna take a couple minutes to answer the questions here in the live chat. Then I'm gonna get out of here. Once again, uh, before I go, Wrestle Crate. If you have not seen it yet, I am being sponsored by Wrestle Crate, and you can get yourself uh, 20 princes. You can get yourself a Wrestle Crate today. You can subscribe. Link to it is down below, and get you a free crate of goodies like this Kingdom Kong DVD and other crazy stuff. As well as this King Omega, uh, toy I got here. They sent that to me. But, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can get this today. Sign up, and then use the promo code DELEXMAN for 20% off your first crate. So, I'm going to actually put that here. So, you can do that today. But, live chat. Who we got here? Jabez. Did you see the way they made... Azale, Azale, Azalea Banks cry. She shouldn't have brought her little soft yourself on there to begin with. Uh, it's quite frankly, man, look. Oh, well, I don't know. This is a show that's not for sensitive people. Like, if you, if you don't go on there, you better be able to take it and give it. And do you see how hard you do anything, huh? You always call everybody ugly ass. That's what he does. So he didn't do anything wrong to her. Um, if I didn't ask you a question, ask me questions now. Let's see here. Pikachu Black, have you heard the Undisputed Era theme song rematch? I have not. Send it to me so I can listen to it. Uh, AJ. Minoru Suzuki versus Brock Lesnar. Who would you book to win and why? Minoru Suzuki versus Brock Lesnar. Um... Everybody wins. I win. <laughs> no, I guess I would have Brock win that one. Because, you know, you want to establish him as a monster. And he's, what, you're sponsored now? Yes, sir. I'm being sponsored by uh, Russell Crane. I'm making my way up. Uh, Nish Bryan. Uh, oh, now it's now going crazy. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me find this real quick. Oh, he was. DDT got more of a pop than Roman at SummerSlam. Yeah, DDT, the legend. Giovanni, what are your thoughts on Dave Batista asking to be fired from Disney after Marvel fired fire James Gunn? Um, James Gunn being fired was, in my opinion, it wasn't the right thing to make because let me let's check up. We got a do shield versus ALP. Well, if you do shield versus ALP, who's the third member of ALP gonna be? Sounds like a good idea, though. Um, the whole situation with James Gunn is ridiculous. He made some really stupid jokes about pedophilia in 2009. Back in, back when he was not in a good place, honestly. And look, what he said was dumb. I'm not condoning his tweets. But my thing is, you hired him to be director despite the tweets. He became the director of Guardians of the Galaxy despite the tweets. And he, he did such an awesome job as that director. Why is it becoming an issue now? You know, and the problem here is this. Team with Braun and face shield, of course. That'd be crazy. That'd be actually be a decent match. But the problem is when it comes to James Gunn, is 
the guy who fired him, the director of Disney, the CEO of Disney, he made an irrational decision because he let outrage culture get the best of him. Outrage culture basically created this idea that this guy was a horrible human being, and he fired him irrationally. But see, now we're in a spot where they can't just bring him back because if they bring him back, it will acknowledge the fact that Disney made a mistake, that Disney is flawed, that Disney is run by someone who makes poor decisions, and that gives them a bad image. And like every other corporation, nobody wants to have a bad image. And it's bullshit. It's dumb. So Batista doing what he's doing, completely understandable. Completely understandable. And quite frankly, I, I'm kind of right there with them. There is no point in even doing... um. There is no point in WWE even doing WWE. Uh, Batista and the cast even doing another movie because the director is not going to be the same. James James Gunn made Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy. If you're not going to have them, what's the point of even continuing? But yeah. Uh, McLean Roach, what are your thoughts on August, August of Pain and Braun Strowman facing the shield? That's pretty okay. I already answered that. Uh, how should we book Jeff Hardy as Brother Nero with Matt leaving every week to, to work backstage? Uh, I would have Matt be as a uh, manager. You can still do the whole gimmick and everything. He's there, right? Madeline. What are your thoughts on Jay White? I have none. <laughs> I don't really like him all that much. Uh... Uh, I might want to change the font of the promo code. It's hard to see. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is it the color? Should I change the color? Yeah, let me let me see if I can change the color real quick. Let's go. Uh, let's do this. That's a little. Is that better? And honestly, let me, let me do this too. Let me... Uh... Because if I, if, I, if I want you to see it... Because I have a scroll going. Let, let's, let's slow this down a little bit. Is that better? How does that look? Does that look a little better for you? I want to be sure you can read that. Uh, um, one more. Uh, have I seen the Titans trailer? I have not. Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, and Captain Marvel are the future of MCU. Absolutely, I agree with that. What did you send me, Pikachu Black? Uh, I'm looking for Michael Law. Michael Law said he wanted to ask me some questions. Uh, all right, here you go. Michael Law, do you think they're doing Ronda versus Nikki solely because it'll be heavily promoted by ESPN? Oh, I hope not. Nikki versus Ronda is such a dumb match to do. That that literally will make me go. Nobody feel like watching this show no more. Like real talk. Like real, 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 real talk. They can have a good card. If that's the main event, I probably won't watch the show. Because that doesn't even sound interesting to me. Uh. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on that. I think that's going to be it. So. Okay. Now people are, okay, look. I can change the font color to whatever color you want me to change it to. People are saying change it to yellow. Uh, there. Hopefully that works for you. So, WrestleCrate. Promo code to Lex Man. Link to it is down below in the description. So check that out. Um. That's gonna be it for me, guys. Uh, I think.
think I'm good. So, thank you for joining me for this live Q&A. Tomorrow, I'll be up here for Raw Review and SmackDown. Um, so, until then, thank you for watching. Thank you for sending me your questions. You guys are awesome. You have a good Sunday. This is your boy, Dulexman, signing off right here in Dulexman's world. You guys take it easy. Peace out. I've been exploring the wireless world of Sprint, and I've learned Sprint is building America's global 5G network. <laughs> I've also discovered the human world through digits. It felt like I was living in the future. An exciting program now available free from Curiosity Stream and Sprint. Digits and other top science and tech programs are now playing free in the Sprint Theater on Curiosity Stream. Discover these great shows and more at curiositystream.com slash Sprint. Sprint, a brighter future for all.